I found myself thinking about what I learned here the previous days. Um, you were talking about our cells, our body cells, um, who are listening, who are, because they are consciousness, right. not just globs of goo. Absolutely. <laughs> listening to our mind and working accordingly. Mm. Listening is an interesting word. We would say consciousness who is vibration, who feels vibrational relationship with other vibrations, your mind being one of, one them. of them. And your mind, and in other words, when you think a thought, you offer a vibration that is emphatically influential to the vibration of your body but your body isn't listening and rejecting your body is just in the proximity of it and benefiting by the vibration or not being lifted and buoyed by it by being allowed by it or being being hindered by it that's the best way of saying it. and so rather than listening let's use the word my cells are vibrational consciousness who are being affected by the tuning of the vibration of my mind okay so here is my question it is on a practical level and it might seem to some people here a little bit far out and this is about nothing here is far out okay <laughs> and this is um are we able or will we be able in this lifetime to uh, recreate parts of our bodies, regrow parts of our bodies if we lost them to yes, amputation. The potential, the potential is there now. And, but, and cellularly, it is understood your cells are replicating themselves again and again and again. Mm -hmm. But you have to understand the, the cell, this is really good. This, how much, let's contemplate this from a cell's point of view for a moment. Isn't it interesting that from that little glob of goo in the Petri dish, well, you didn't all start out in the Petri dish, but, <laughs> but it makes a good picture. From that little gooey beginning, part of that goo knew how to be an eyeball. And part of that goo knew how to be a hair follicle. In other words, and part of it knew how to be this organ or that organ. In other words, the intelligence of the cell is incredible. So now, let's contemplate, ooh, this is so good. Do you think that there are eyeball cells and fingernail cells and heart cells? Or do you think there are cooperative cells who can align to the bigger image that's being projected by more powerful consciousness. Absolutely, yes. So, what is that more powerful consciousness? Well, in your time-space reality, there, what you call reality that you can see and hear and smell and taste and touch, is this collective agreement for the most part. In other words, the reason you call reality reality and the reason that the scientists are, have it so slow going is because they're not willing to contemplate far from the reality that already exists. But that's all right. That's why the evolution of the all species is sort of slow is because what you are focused upon sort of causes a a cementing or a, of your expectation so that it continues to be the same and so we've been saying for a long time that people don't grow new arms or uh, extra sets of Esther would if she could she would like at least two more arms <laughs> frequently it would be very handy yes. a baby was born not long ago with three arms and they amputated one and Esther said no no <laughs> But the reason that people aren't doing it is simply because it is not believed to be possible. So that that broader mind is hindering the potential or not encouraging the potential. That's right. So 
there is this broadest of minds, which is the whole of you, that, you, that existed in the non-physical before you came forth into this body, that was projecting this very powerful intention that the cells of your body, even while they were forming in the womb of your mother, were learning much of their behavior from the non-physical yes, but the intention or belief or understanding of the mother. And that's all just fine. In fact, it's really wonderful because it's, it's nice to have this nest in which to be born. But very soon after that, we would like you to accept your autonomy and accept that you have the ability to think thoughts and you have the ability to guide the cells of your body as you would like them to understand. So if you intend to be taller, you can be. Jerry and Esther have a dear friend who works at a restaurant that they frequent often when they are in California. And he, Jerry asked him if he meditates. And he said, I didn't and then I did for a long time and now I'm not much anymore. Why do you ask? And Jerry said, well, we're working on a meditation CD with Abraham and I was just curious about that. He is a musician and he said, you know, it's interesting. I was very short and very pudgy and very unpopular and very turned inward and very um, unhappy. And my mother came across Seth. And she encouraged me to meditate. He said, I began meditating, which is just simply the process of quiet in his mind and giving his cells a reprieve from discordant thought for a while. And then I began visualizing. I began visualizing myself more as I wanted to be. And he said, in the next year, I grew six inches, I lost 50 pounds, I became involved in school, I got active in music. In other words, his whole world shifted because in that process, instead of just being and responding and reacting, he began directing his thought in a way that matched the intentionality that he had launched even before his birth. In other words, he came into alignment and his physical body cooperated. Now that's easier for people to hear when you're still a, a child or even when you're in adolescence. In other words, you accept growth spurts under those conditions because you see them. But we would like you all to accept that there is nothing that you cannot be or do or have. You live in a cooperative universe which includes your physical apparatus and whatever you want will be. You form the image and if you do not defy your own image with reality or with expectation or with the learned knowing of scientists and doctors who know better than the fantasy you're dreaming up, if you don't do that, you will discover the cooperative, the cooperative, we talk about this vortex where all cooperative components are assembled. And we tease you, we say, are you a cooperative component? Because often you're not. Everything that you want has been assembled, but you're not seeing the manifestation of it because you're doubting it. You're worrying about it. You're not a cooperative component. You get in this vortex and spend some time in this vortex and begin paying attention to what's going on in your experience. And those who are watching you will find you an anomaly, an anomaly. Until in time, there will be enough of those weird, freakish recoveries that it won't be an anomaly anymore. It will be a new science. Oh, a new science. That's, that's, how, the scientists, that's how the scientists discover new science. They start out with a hypothesis, an idea, mm -hmm. and then others believe enough in the idea that they make it true, you see? And why, why would you participate or be a participant in the physical world who participates predominantly in the can't-dos, in the not possibilities? It's not possible. Why do you say that? Because it's never been done. Well, 
And that's your reason? That, because it's never been done? That's your reason? That's ridiculous. If you can dream it, if you can imagine it, if you can conjure it, if you can want it, you can have it no matter what it is. But what limits you, what holds you back is the very first thing that you said to us when you use the word weird. Most will see this as weird. And mm -hmm. so most people are so wrapped up. Most people cannot see themselves only in conjunction with their own possibilities. Most people have wrapped around themselves the way others see them in everything that they do. So when you factor how others see you into it, you bog you it right it. down. Yeah. You bog it right down. So okay. you have to reach this place where you don't care who gets the credit. You don't care who understands it. You're doing it. You don't even care if it manifests because if you care that something manifests that hasn't manifested, you've introduced resistance right. to it. You just have to so enjoy the dreaming process that you dream for the joy of dreaming. And if you dream enough for the joy of dreaming, the manifestations will just follow you around until other people will say, what in the world are you doing? You say, dreaming, dreaming. Well, how's that possible? And then you say, don't write me, don't email me, don't call me. Because I have a dream that I believe and I don't want to talk to somebody who doesn't get it. <laughs> yes. Really good. I feel empowered. Thank you very much.